Shalom guys, Shalom sisters, Shalom brothers, how are you doing? So, I think that the most appropriate thing today to talk about still is redemption because really we're not able to continue in the path that we are walking in without increasing the level of faith and hope and positive mindset and for a person really to cheer up himself and to uplift himself to a better place for that he needs to have a goal he needs to have a purpose to his life now in reality in many many ways we try to cheer up ourselves with certain good things and good points that we're finding in our lives but in times of difficulties in times of crisis in times of pain a higher dose of inspiration and hope is needed and required for us really to pull ourselves out of the darkness i guess that my heart, like, a, like you know, for many, many years, um, does not satisfy itself with small things. And my spirit does not get any quiet and happiness and joy or satisfaction from, uh, from regular things that... I think many people are getting happy with and like satisfy themselves with like you can see happy people taking pictures in front of the pool or whatever like enjoying tours and trips and like fancy restaurants and like fancy hotels or whatever like I don't know those things does not really give me no pleasure and joy I cannot say that it's not more comfortable to stay in a better hotel than in a worst one you cannot say that the tasty food is not more delicious and tasty and satisfying than uh, than than bad food than not tasty food but really to make out of those small moments of our lives a purpose like really to lean on them and to hang your life on them and to say like hey man i had such a great day the the pool was amazing like the food was great like I don't know, I, I can never find satisfaction in that level and, uh, and, uh, and I tried, <laughs> I tried to enjoy this world but uh, it never brought me to a place of real happiness and joy and um, even when I'm thinking about the greater levels of, uh, of redemption, of salvation, even when I'm thinking about a whole person's prayers to be accepted let's say that someone is very very poor and suffering greatly and has enormous um, amounts of grief and like struggles badly with so many things and like suddenly you're gonna tell him hey you became rich you you can like the house is yours like the car is yours you don't need to no more payments like I can understand that that person will experience a great happiness, like a huge stone will be removed from his back, from his chest. But really to find comfort and happiness in that point, like after that fact, like I don't know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't make no sense. Because I'm thinking to myself, we, we visit um, one month ago friends in Texas and um, and one of my friends over there he told me that his neighbors um non-jewish people but very modest and very nice and very like polite people and he really enjoyed the company of those neighbors and he really found satisfaction with them and enjoys their their manners and their respect and and their their their, their way of behavior their manners and and like he was really impressed by them so I'm asking myself okay like so you have a friend you have a neighbor like that and let's say that all your prayers came true and let's say that 
all your salvation just took place. You, 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 the house is yours, the car is yours, like you, and you have a few more millions in your pocket, and your wife just recovered, and your, your child is happy, like, and, and everything is amazing, like suddenly you have been redeemed completely. But what about your neighbor? right your neighbor still stuck okay so in that position where you find your own happiness but your neighbor does not i see your happiness as empty i see your happiness as still in 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 a great like lacking because your neighbor like a person that you care about a person that you appreciate a person that that you want to know that he himself is also rising and climbing in the levels um, of happiness and joy and that he also finds satisfaction from his life and that all his prayers are being answered as well. And therefore, when I'm looking at life, I see that there is no real purpose in life, even after achieving all your goals and, and finding all your dreams come true. There is no purpose in it except for running and trying to bring the whole redemption. And this is why I want to talk about it more and more. Because if, let's say now, you're going to go to someone and going to tell him, Hey, listen, man, you must eat a, a vegetarian food. Like, like oh, oh, why? Like, you can you explain a little bit more about it? Like, why do you want to stop me from eating meat? Like, why? Tell me. Like, why? If you won't sit with him and explain to him in depth exactly why why you think that it's better for him not to eat meat, he won't stop. And even if you're going to tell him all the way and going to explain to him deep explanations, probably he won't stop yet as well. Why? Because he never experienced the spiritual effect of it or he never really like took it in. If you want to explain something to someone, you really need to let him experience that thing. You need to let him go through that same experience that you went through. And life will inspire him for that change as well. And you cannot, by certain words, take a person from one place to another. This is something that we know that many Baal Tshuva, people that are trying to come closer and closer to Hashem, to the Creator, and they're willing to... To, to to change their lives in, in a beautiful way and to start serving God and, and dedicating their lives to the Torah and to and to keep the, the, the obligations, the mitzvot of the Bible, of the oral Torah. And when they are waking up for that, so something very simple is rising in their minds is that they feel like they want to go and tell others. And then they go and tell their parents, they go and tell their brothers, hey, their friends, the best friends in the world, you don't know. I kept Shabbat, I ate kosher food, I wore tzitzit, I've been to the Bet Knesset. Join with me, come with me, let's try, try. You don't know, your life will change, it's going to be so amazing. And their friends are looking at them like, are you kidding me? Are you stupid or what? Like, what happened to you? Like, you think I'm, 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 I'm going to miss the game? You think I'm... I'm, I'm not going to make barbecue in, in Saturday anymore. Like, I'm not going to go to the beach. Like, you are you, out of your mind. Like, what, are you crazy? Like, why? But you tell them with all your heart and you have a passion for that. And then, listen, brother, come with me. And you, you might even be able to drag him with you to the synagogue or to, like, whatever. He won't change like you. It won't, like, the spark won't make a fire in the same power that you feel inside of yourself, it won't happen so easy. Why? Because you went through a whole life journey that brought you to that point that you're willing to change, that you're ready to change. Hashem went a certain way, a certain path with you. Not one visit in a synagogue changed your life. Not one kosher meal changed your life. A whole life experience that built the change inside of you brought you to that point point of change, changing point that took you elsewhere. And it might happen in a bit Knesset, in a synagogue, or in a, in a kosher restaurant, or in, in, a, in a Shabbat service, or whatever. But it, it's not in one moment in your life that took your life to a different place. It's a whole built up 
of your character, of your life experience that brought you to a certain development, that built a certain vessel inside of you to contain a deeper understanding and meaningful about life. So when you want to go and share that information with a friend, it's very hard to pass that feeling, that uh, inspiration that you feel in your heart and to convince him and to affect him and to change his life in like in a moment or in an hour or in a day or a month, it's, it won't work. So this is why I think that about the redemption, I need to speak with you guys as much as I can because it's very, very important that uh, every person um, will have more of this content, of this wisdom in his mind and will have more thoughts and, uh, and will have more understandings about it and will pray about it more and will think about it more and will talk about it more and will hear about it more. And then an inner desire will grow inside each and every one of you guys as well to want the redemption and not only to want your troubles to stop. Because to want the troubles to stop, it's a fine thing. It's a nice thing. It's an okay thing. There's no problem with wanting your troubles to be gone, to disappear, or also to care about other people's troubles to disappear. But there is something way greater and way more important than just to put an end to the darkness. I explained uh, to you many times <coughs> I explained to you many times about um about time and time is a very crucial thing and very important and while a person is still locked in time it's very hard for him to understand the concept of of redemption the real true righteous people they enjoy something that is called Ruach HaKodesh, Divine Spirit, Holy Spirit. And Divine Spirit is a certain spirit that hovers upon the person, the righteous one. And when it touches him, when his soul is illuminated with that Divine Spirit, so it gives him an access to a wider um, range, to a wider um, space that he can sense and feel things in a godly way that is not as limited as it was before. So, of course, it depends in the amount of divine spirit that comes and hover upon the person. And it depends in the level of the person before the divine spirit hovers upon him. And it depends in the purpose and the reason for what he enjoyed this Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, and in many other factors as well. But when that divine spirit comes upon the person so his mind is being attached to a higher and divine and godly perspective on life and he can see things from a different angle above time and above space now not many people enjoy that illumination of course many righteous and chosen ones enjoyed it with time, with the generation, since the beginning of time, but not all the time a lot of people enjoying that spirit. This is something rare that takes place in, 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 in lives of individuals and not in lives of, of publics. It happened few times during history to great publics that huge um, communities and groups of people reached a certain spiritual level and illumination that they enjoyed that divine spirit and they were able to experience that Holy Spirit, Holy Light of, of God, of Hashem. 
But usually people are very far from that. When the redemption will come and will take place, all of us together will enjoy that divine spirit. A huge amount of light will come down to earth, to our level of, of actions, to our mindset, and will open our eyes to see things in a different way. And it might be a little bit like interesting in the beginning like weird what's going on like how things like what am i going through like maybe a few people will feel hard because people used to want to have control and and want to be stable and like suddenly they're gonna feel like weaving like something is taking them a little bit they're out of their body they're like elsewhere they like you can sense things in a wider way but then suddenly we will all flow into that new point of view and we will see and experience that no damage is, is happening to us and we won't feel no, no pain and no sorrow anymore. And therefore we will allow ourselves to flow with that divine spirit and all the awareness of all people will rise to see the, the global picture, the complete picture, to see everything from a different angle, from an angle of completion, and not from being behind the curtain, just from being above it. When the Creator created the world, like I said many times, and I will probably gonna have to continue talking about that for a certain while, He created a layer it's called Rakia. Rakia is the sky. And he put down that layer of sky and it's like a sheet that is covering and cutting to half the existence of the world and blocked the souls, the Holy One soul that was under that sheet, under that curtain of separation and blocked that soul underneath a physical layer of materia, of earth. Now, to explain to you in a way that will be easier for you to understand, so think about an artist, a maker, someone who works with clay, and he started to build and shape forms and physical bodies out of that clay with heads and shoulders and hands and chest and backs and tummies and legs and all the organs and everything, inner ones and outside ones and everything with hair and everything. He built it. And then the surface of the ground and trees. He built trees with branches and put fruits on them and everything and leaves. He patched leaves on every tree and every tree was different than another and faces and portraits. Everything was different. And then he linked, he connected the spirit to the physicality. He mixed them. He joined them. He pumped air, spirit, divine spirit into the, that creation and brought life into it. And suddenly like Pinocchio waking up in the middle of, 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 of nowhere, like to life, a man came down to earth. A man and his wife Eve, like suddenly they were, they were here, like they were somewhere. They were individuals. And then they started to multiply and to bring more and more bodies down to earth. And every body with the spark of life that is installed in the sperm of the man and the egg of the woman together gave that access to that portion of light that we described before earlier that is hidden behind that physical curtain. And those souls are entering into the physical body, into those physical traps, into those containers, into those bodies, and start pumping life to those forms. 
and those bodies are walking and working and talking and hearing and listening and arguing and fighting and loving and and making changes and, and loving each other and killing each other and fighting with each other and giving and, and, and sharing and, and, and sponsoring and stealing and robbing and, and, and hating and, and, and jealousy and fighting with each other. And that rebel and that war is taking place in the creation in the creation in in a layer of bodies of separated bodies now that is all creation and that creation went adam and eve they met each other they spoke they loved each other they brought children to the world their children they fought with each other they killed each other but some of them stayed alive and got married and brought more kids to the world and more children came and nations been built and different and separations and part of them went to different islands and to different states and some of them stayed in the in their in in the closest area to the garden of eden where the, it all started and animals spread all around and different different landscapes and different views and changes in the weather and like all history took place right but Remember, it's all creation. For you, it's your life. For you, like, oh man, it's my reality. No, no, no. That is your experience as a prisoner in your own body. But when the divine spirit will hover upon you and your awareness will rise above your cell, about your, above your body, and you're going to understand that you are an outcome of a whole movie that you are a result in that road of time that you're the child of your parents that you are the result of the community and society that designed your character and your face and your portrait is something that been printed onto your soul as as your reflection as the reflection of your spirit that is locked inside your vehicle that is your body. And that soul came to you through your parents and to them through their parents and to them through their parents and on and on. And like we're talking about families, ancient cultures and different tribes that went through water and fire and wind and earth, that went through ups and downs and been killed and been slaughtered for their religion and for their relationships and refugees ran from one state to the next and like all history brought you to be who you are right now that's you you are the outcome of creation you're not the one to blame for not waking up in the morning you're not the one to blame for not getting married yet you're not the one to be blamed for not having pockets filled with money and cash flowing all over the place no you're an outcome of a crazy financial and economic situation that is surrounding the world you're part of something way bigger than what than you you don't have access to billions you don't have access to relationships you don't know how to to meet more people how to can you it's like you try you do the best you can but it doesn't work all the time it's like it's reality that is the truth and the truth of who you are and the truth of who I am and the truth of the fact that this is a house and those are shades and this is a, 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 a bookcase and those are my books and this is a computer and like reality of a microphone and an iPhone and Torah and conversation, beard, side curls, kippah, eyes, nose, like truth is the reflection of his grace and his kindness now. Also the pain, also the darkness, also all the bad and dark things that are happening outside or inside our lives, in our mind, in our hearts, in our houses, in, our, in our, the backyards, like in the neighbor's house, like all that darkness is also a reflection of his godliness. It's the reflection of, of the, the name Elohim, of, of the name that represents judgments. 
You have Havaya, Yudki Vavke, that is the name of glory, that is the name of grace, that is the name of, of Akadosh Baruch Hu, of Hashem Barach, of our Lord, of our God, of, of the Almighty, of, of, of the One above, of the Endless One, of infinity itself, of its grace. And you have Elohim. Elohim is the judgment. Elohim are the judgments. Elohim is the heaven's court judgments that are hitting down on the world hard and harsh and breaking it to pieces because of true justice not because of lies not because of twisted lies just because of true violations of honest codes because of true sins that are being committed and crimes of evil that must be judged, that must be punished. And sometimes, let's say that a person stolen one million dollars and you want him to pay it back and he lost the money. He went to the casino and threw all the money away. And he like, okay, you caught me. What do you want? Like, I don't have a penny. No, you have to pay. Okay, how do you want me to pay? Like, all right, I'm willing to pay. Or I don't have a choice and I'm, okay, I'll pay. He will pay monthly, he will pay yearly, he will pay daily. He will pay slowly, slowly until he will finish covering his debt. His debt to society, his debt by the rules of truth under the heaven's court, the courts of heaven. So it might take him several lifetimes to pay. And this is why some people are suffering from crazy attacks, from crazy pains and like... What in the world? Like, how did it happen? What's going on? Listen, there is a huge trial above the heads of all peoples on earth, but it's all fixed and set. And there is a creator that looks on everything from above and brings it all to an end. And that path that we described that started with Adam and Eve and the separation of families to nations, 70 nations, and the nation of Israel is one of the 71. And, and then the tribes of Israel separating. And then you have different populations and communities and families. And okay, now you. Okay, great. Now that you, you are in the last generation. What it means that you are are the outcome of that journey. You are almost in the victory line. We're all about to finish. We're all about to be redeemed. Now it's hard for you to grasp. It's hard to understand. But the completion is so soon to come that in one moment even if you think that you still have a debt, even that you think that he still owes you so much, even that you think that, hey, I haven't finished yet. No, I still have plans. The porch, the backyard, they, they, they like, relax. There is someone above that knows way more than us. And he's tying all the strings together. He pulls all the edges, all the tops. He brings them all to a central place of completion. And we are all about to be complete and then to see it all from a different angle. Suddenly, our eyes will be open and we're going to recognize the true Mashiach. We're going to recognize the true leaders of the generation and all the false and lousy ones will just going to melt into the core of earth and we won't see them anymore. All the evil will disappear. All the murderers and the rapists and all the thieves and all the lousy people that are hurting our lives. All those ones who are not stopping, damaging and robbing and stealing us will just be gone. And all the loot, all the bounty, all the treasures will go up to the surface. It will rise and will be handed to us in a perfect and equal way that no one will lack anything in his life anymore and we all will be redeemed all of our dreams will come true all the answer to all your questions will be answered you'll know the answer you'll figure out the text 
We will teach the Torah to everyone. The Torah will be open. All the books will be open, one after the other. Every worthy book, every book of truth will be open and will be explored and will be taught to all 70 nations, to all 70 languages, that everyone will hear the truth, that everyone will understand it. All the Torah and all the prophets' words and all the, 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 the oral Torah and all the explanations, the Mishnah, the Gemara, the Zohar, all the Midrashim, all the holy scripts, all the holy books of all the righteous ones will be open and will be discussed in, in public and will be translated to all 70 languages and will be broadcast online on all social media outlets, on huge screens, sounds of music. It, there will be time for everything because we'll have 1,000 years of redemption. We're going to live eternal life. We're going to cross the stage of endless eternal life. We won't die. Death will disappear from the world. We will all be young in our spirits. We'll all be happy and strong and stable, like Moses in his days, like Abraham and Sarah in, the, in their days. We will cross the distance and we're all going to walk to that holy place in Jerusalem, to the holy mount of, of Zion, to visit in the place of God, in the house of Hashem, in the house of prayer that will be called the house of prayer to all nations. That every simple person with simple faith in his heart will have the ability to go and thank God for everything and to praise Him for His greatness. And that day is coming. And that day is coming if people want it to come and if people are afraid that it will come and if people who are willing to accept it, it's coming. It's coming and it's taking place. And the real true Mashiach will be revealed soon. And the real true followers of truth and justice and, and love will be proudly uh, presented as, as the real servants of God. So for us, there is only one thing to do, to keep on sharing the light, to keep on helping each other and doing the best that we can, to keep on supporting the ones who believe in them, and to keep on helping every poor person that needs help and support to do the best that we can and to invest our time and our power and all of our sources to bring the redemption, to bring awareness to the hearts of people, to bring love between souls, between spirits, between bodies, to bring love and harmony to everyone. And don't forget to like those videos, to share those videos with your loved ones and not to stop talking to the Creator like you talk to your best friend from the bottom of your heart. Thank you, and may the Creator bless us all to rise and shine and not to lose our happiness and our faith ever. Amen. Can you hear us on? Thank you. The world is not existing because Olam Milchon Elev, the world is just blocking the light of truth. The world called Alma de Shika, world of light, is just a fake. We're just inside of an illusion. It's just a fake. We're just inside of an illusion.